Andrew, Andrew Rossendale. To ask the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs if he will make a statement on the decision by the Spanish authorities to implement border and passport checks at the frontier with Gibraltar on the 10th of October. Andrew Rosendown. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for her response. However, the people of Gibraltar have long memories. When Labour were last in power, the Blair government attempted to agree a joint sovereignty deal with Spain, behind the backs of the Gibraltarians and without their consent. It was all about appeasing Spain and the European Union then, and some of us fear the same could happen this time. Even if the decision to effectively impose a hard border on the 10th of October by Spain on the frontier was not made centrally, the fact that this extreme measure happened at all is incredibly concerning and a warning of what is to come if a solid bilateral agreement is not reached in the coming weeks. If a hard border is implemented, there are no winners. The people of Spain and Gibraltar both suffer. The fact that, this, the fact that despite this, Spain continues to weaponise the frontier with the aim of exercising authority over sovereign British territory is morally and constitutionally reprehensible. Yeah. There can be no Spanish boots on the rock. Yeah. This must be non-negotiable. The people of Gibraltar have been bullied by the Spanish authorities over many decades. And this latest infraction comes at a critical time in the negotiations over the future of the frontier with the new Schengen area entry exit control system on the horizon. So does she agree that any agreement must fully acknowledge that Gibraltar is 100% British. The people of Gibraltar have made it abundantly clear that they reject any suggestion of Spanish sovereignty by voting to remain British. His Majesty's Government have a duty to stand by the loyal people of Gibraltar, whatever it takes. There can be no weakening of British sovereignty at the Gibraltarians' right of self-determination must be upheld. So with this in mind, and following the government's betrayal of the British Chagossian people only last week, will the minister raise this incident with her counterpart in Madrid as a matter of urgency, confirm that she will never capitulate to Spain's demands to allow Spanish brutes on Gibraltarian soil in any negotiation and guarantee the government's steadfast loyalty to the sovereign British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar and its people. Minister. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I have to say I regret the tone that was adopted by the Honourable Gentleman. I think many of us in this House are friends of our overseas territories. We very much respect their right to sovereignty. And in that context, it is critical that we always focus on the facts of the matter and do not seek to obtain party political advantage from them. I'm sure that he will have seen indeed the comments from the Chief Minister of Gibraltar, which could not have been clearer on this matter. It is inappropriate to politicise these matters. The UK Government could not have been clearer that we are confident of British sovereignty over the whole of Gibraltar, including British Gibraltar territorial waters. We are steadfast in our support for Gibraltar, and the UK Government will never, Madam Deputy Speaker, enter into arrangements under which the people of Gibraltar would pass under the sovereignty of another state against their freely and democratically expressed wishes. And we will never enter into a process of sovereignty negotiations with which Gibraltar is not content. That double lock is safe with this government, and we are fully committed to it. Thank you. Matt Francois. Thank you. History shows again and again that appeasement doesn't work. It was inevitable that after the abject surrender of the Chagos Islands, for that is what it is, the Spanish would try and exert pressure on Gibraltar. On a member's shake their heads, the government is so embarrassed by the Chagos deal, they won't even tell the House of Commons what we're going to have to pay to rent back our own base. That's how embarrassed you are. So coming back to Gibraltar, 
My my Honourable friend is quite right. Under Blair, Labour tried to sell them out for joint sovereignty, and a referendum killed it. So as we couldn't trust you on Gibraltar before, why on earth, after what you've done to Chagos and the Chagossians, should we trust you now? Minister. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I really do regret this, to be honest, slightly playground-style characterisation of issues that are so fundamental for people, particularly those who live in Gibraltar. I did mention the comments of the First Minister uh, of the Falklands before, and I'm afraid that I've been forced to quote them, uh, given the nature of what the member just said. He said some of these claims are more about party politics, blame gaming and Tory party leadership issues than they're actually about the sovereignty of people who live in the overseas territories. I don't think he could have been clearer.